Hey, uh, good afternoon, everyone. I'm uh, Dvir Feulich from the Cleveland Clinic. I would like to thank the uh, SAGES Committee for allowing to present our study here today. I'll be discussing uh, laparoscopic uh, versus open inguinal hernia repair in patient with obesity based on the Nesquip database. I have no disclosures. Uh, laparoscopic approach to inguinal hernia repair has proven beneficial in uh, uh, reducing postoperative pain, in facilitating early return to normal activity, and uh, uh, in, uh, in addition uh, to has been beneficial in recurrent and bilateral inguinal hernia repair as well. Uh, how does weight affect uh, the perioperative outcome after inguinal hernia repair. Uh, it's been well established in the literature that uh, the higher the BMI, the higher the perioperative complications after um, uh, various type of procedures. Uh, it has been uh, shown that uh, BMI over 30 is a significant risk factor for perioperative um, uh, morbidity compare after inguinal hernia repair compared to uh, BMI of over and less than 20. Our study aim was to investigate the outcome of laparoscopic versus open approach to inguinal hernia repair on early postoperative morbidity in the obese population by using the Nesquip database. We included all open and laparoscopic uh, inguinal hernia repairs uh, with of patients with BMI over 30 between the years 2005 and to 2013. We excluded all emergency cases, uh, patients with ascites, recent weight loss, cancer, chemotherapy, radiation, uh, patient with preoperative wound issues, and pregnant women. <coughs> we divided our outcome to a uh, primary outcome, which included 30 days wound mobility, and secondary outcomes were pulmonary and cardiac complications, length of stay, and mortality. We used the propensity score as a model-based adjustment for clinically important based on characteristics such as age, sex, BMI, uh, different comorbidities, and procedure type. Um, the propensity score is uh, it's a matching uh, uh, system that attempts to reduce the bias uh, created by different variables prior to performing a regression analysis. We also use different kind of statistical tests to compare mortality and length of stay. Uh, all analysis uh, were done by using uh, a 5% level of significance. Here is our results. Out of 46,793 patients, 7,645 patients met our inclusion criteria. Among them, 5,573 patients uh, had laparoscopic repair, and the rest were open. So here are the groups. Uh, when we first look at them, they were not exactly the same. And as you can see, there are some major differences between them uh, in the basic characteristics. In order to overcome those differences, we apply the propensity score. And this is how it works. This graph represents the differences between the two groups. The red dots represent the differences before applying the propensity score, and the blue triangles represents the differences after. And as you can see, those differences actually narrowed after the propensity score. Both age, bilateral inguinal hernia, and recurrent inguinal hernia 
had the greatest standard effect. Therefore, we applied an adjusted propensity score to make those differences uh, even further narrowed. However, bilateral inguinal hernia remains statistically a uh, significant uh, difference since laparoscopic uh, uh, bilateral were much more than the open. This is our primary outcome, as you can see. Uh, the, uh, after performing the univariate analysis, laparoscopic repair showed a protective effect in deep surgical site infection and wound dehiscence. However, when we applied the propensity score, those differences diminished. And in both adjusted and uh, weighted propensity score, we did not find any difference in our primary outcome. This is our secondary outcome. The only thing that was significantly, uh, statistically significant was the return to the OR, which was mass much less common uh, following the laparoscopic repair. Uh, unfortunately, we could not determine the, uh, uh, the reason for return to the OR, uh, and that's because in some years uh, the, uh, uh, the indication were not mentioned, and in recent years the CPT codes did not correlate with the, uh, with the actual uh, uh, procedure, with the actual hernia repair. So in summary, based on the NACE data, there is no difference in outcome between laparoscopic and open inguinal hernia repair in obese patients uh, regards to uh, wound morbidity and additional 30 days morbidity and mortality. In regards to perioperative outcome, laparoscopic inguinal hernia repair has been proven to be at least equivalent to open inguinal hernia repair in experienced hands. In our in this study, we assume that laparoscopic approach in obese may have an advantage. We were wrong. Despite the advantage of laparoscopy in various surgical procedures, laparoscopic approach to inguinal hernia repair in obese patient has similar outcome as an open approach with regards to 30 days wound events. We recommend that surgeons choose the repair that they are most comfortable performing on a base patient. Thank you.